What's up guys, this is Coach Tony from Elevate Yourself. In this video, we'll learn a three-step approach jump, which is a fundamental way to jump high and spike the ball and applicable at the youth level all the way to the Olympic level athletes that still use the three-step approach jump technique. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who makes educational and inspirational volleyball and training content. Even if you've been playing volleyball for a while, you'll definitely learn some nuances on how to squeeze out more inches from your three-step approach jump. Let's get right into it. The three-step approach can be applied to all positions, whether you're outside, right side, or a middle hitter, and is the very first hitting approach that you should learn whenever you're learning volleyball. First, let's talk about what is good technique and why it's important to apply it. I define technique as getting the best result with the least amount of effort and the lowest occurrence of injury, which is my philosophy on how you should always approach training and performance. Now we'll talk about the starting position. I'm about five foot 10 and I usually start my three step approach slightly behind the three meter line or the 10 foot line, which is where I recommend majority of the athletes to start. If I'm a little shorter, you can start a little closer. If I'm a little taller, you can start a little further back, but you have to play with that because everyone's limb length, especially the legs are different lengths, even if the height is the same. For my starting position, the opposite leg of my hitting arm should be back. So I'm a right-handed hitter, so that means my left foot should be back. If I'm a left-handed hitter, then I should switch my feet and my right foot should be back. We wanna have a 20 to 30 degree lean where most of my weight is on my front foot and my knee is bent slightly or what I call a soft knee. This puts me into a pre-accelerated position where I'm already at the ideal angle to take my first step Whereas if I start upright, then I have to lean forward to take a step. So that saves me a little time and gets me into my first step faster. For my arms, you gotta make sure they're relaxed and hanging loose in front in case I need to play the ball, but also it helps me get into my front swing earlier. So just to review, starting position, opposite leg back of my hitting arm, 20 to 30 degree lean forward, arms relaxed in front. Next, we'll talk about foot sequence or step sequence. If I'm a right-handed hitter, I'm gonna go left, right, left. If I'm a left-handed hitter, right foot back, right, left, right. If that doesn't feel comfortable, make sure you practice that sequence over and over and over again until that foot order feels natural. Left, right, left for right-handed hitters. Right, left, right for left-handed hitters. Now let's talk about the distance of the steps, which is very important for maximizing your vertical jump and minimizing excessive broad jump because we do want to jump mostly upward when we're spiking a volleyball, unless you're spiking from the back row, but that's for a, another video. My first step should be a walking step or a jog step, which means the distance should be a medium length. My second step should be a long step where I'm pushing off my back leg to extend the second step. My last step should be a short step where the distance between my feet is shoulder width or slightly wider. In summary, it's medium, long, short. And those are the three distances for each step. Next, we'll talk about the foot angles. Now, why are foot angles important? The first one, which is your directional step, meaning where I want to initiate majority of my momentum, telling my body where to go, should always be toward where you want to be set or where you want to contact the ball. For example, if I'm hitting from the left side or right side, I want to contact the ball slightly inside the sideline, a couple feet off the net. So that's where my first step should be. Now, even if you need to make adjustments, the adjustments are usually made on the second and third step. But my first step should always be toward the same direction where I want to get set. If I'm spiking from the middle, my first step should be where the setter is because that's where I'm gonna be contacting the ball right in front of the setter. So the angle of my first step should be straight toward where I want to get set. The angle of my second step should be turned 30 to 45 degrees because that helps me initiate my hips to open up for spiking power, but also helps me position for the angle of my third step, 
which should be 45 to 90 degrees depending on your limb length, how well you can internally rotate, and a lot of other factors. Once again, first step should be straight. Second step, you should turn your foot 30 to 45 degrees. Third step, turn 45 to 90 degrees. The reason why you should be turning your last step as much as possible is because it acts as a braking mechanism to keep my body from jumping forward and helps me convert all this energy into vertical momentum, which leads into my next topic of why do we jump higher when we have a running start versus from a standstill. If you wanna increase your vertical jump and become a more powerful and explosive athlete, then use my jump training programs linked below. My 12 month jump training program that utilizes standard gym equipment, provides weekly workouts, tells you exactly what to do, when to do it. It also comes with a mobile training app and over 100 exercise tutorial videos. So you can take me as your virtual trainer to the gym, just like I was coaching you in person. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get 5% off all of my jump training programs. A running start helps you jump higher because you're essentially converting horizontal momentum or speed into vertical momentum in addition to your natural strength and power that you have from your hips, quads, and calf muscles extending into the air. Your last two steps are the most important steps in terms of the distance and the foot angles to convert as much of that horizontal momentum into vertical momentum and not lose or leak power into the ground or any other loss of momentum. Once I walk into my first step, I'm gonna push off of that first step to elongate into my penultimate step. So I'm not lunging forward or galloping forward, I'm pushing forward and that naturally lowers my hip to load for the squat at the very end. So remember, this is the penultimate step or your second to last step, which is where majority of your jumping power should be generated. And then my last step is called the block step. I block that horizontal momentum and I convert it into vertical momentum. Now we've talked about the lower body, we're gonna talk about the upper body, which includes the torso and mostly the arms. Your upper body can contribute anywhere from 10 to 20% to your vertical jump if you use it properly. So not only do you have to have the right motion, but you also have to synchronize it with your feet. After I take my first step, I'm gonna bring my arms up to chest height with my elbows bent. So it's very relaxed in this position. I'm not straight out here. I'm really relaxed in front. The second alternative is I can do a scissor, which is what I personally do, because I feel like I can jog into my first step easier. So it doesn't matter which one you do, you gotta experiment with which one feels more comfortable. So once I get into my first step, as I push off my front leg, I'm gonna powerfully bring my arms back into my backswing. And the goal is to bring it as far back and up as possible. And then my third step, as I position my block step, my hands should strike the floor as I'm about to jump from my block step into my attack position. So in summary, it's forward, back, up, or jog, back, up. Lastly, let's talk about your landing mechanics. When we're landing, try your best to land on both feet into a soft squat like you're gonna scare somebody. So my thighs should be either into a half squat above parallel or at parallel to really absorb force both through your quadriceps and your glutes and your calves, but hands in front for balance. If you have to land on one leg first, which is usually your lead leg, make sure you immediately follow it up with your rear leg. So if I'm broad jumping a little bit, which is normal, try to still land into a deep squat into the lead to back leg. This is really important for protecting your knees because you want your muscles to help decelerate your body and not your joints. Not only does this prevent long-term injury, but this also saves energy for more jumps because in order to decelerate quickly, your body has to tense the whole body and absorb all that force, whereas if it decelerates slowly, it takes a lot less effort from your muscle to absorb that force. So you can jump higher for longer and with less injury. Let's talk about the torso, which is the body from your waist 
through the base of your neck, not including your arms. So pretty much your spine and your rib cage, not including your neck. We know that from our first step, our torso should be roughly 20 to 30 degrees forward. As I'm transitioning into my second step, I have to get into an upright position as early as possible as I extend into my penultimate step. The reason why is because as I'm transitioning to my last step, as soon as I do a block step here, I can quickly get into triple extension. If I lean forward the entire time, it takes too much time for my body to extend. By that time, my momentum is past my legs and I can't jump up, I end up jumping forward. You lose a lot of speed, which means you lose vertical jump. Last part we'll talk about is rhythm. In general, we wanna progress from slow to fast. So be patient on that first step and then push punch, which is a term I took from Project Pure Athlete. Shout out to my guy, Ty. You wanna push and quickly punch into the last one. So slow to fast. Another aspect that will help you maintain good jumping rhythm is being relaxed and loose with your arms. If you're too stiff, you're gonna slow down your body. Tension at the wrong time is what slows down your body. Tension at the right time is what creates an explosive fast athlete. So be relaxed here, loose, and then tense as you lift up in the air. Really loose so you can get into that backswing really high and really fast. You probably noticed that I've been wearing these calf sleeves, and this is from a company called Go Sleeves, which is an incredible company that offers elbow, knee, and calf sleeves, and they act like reusable kinesio tape and give you just enough support so that you can play as you're recovering from an injury, but also they increase blood flow and keep your muscles and joints warm as you're playing so you're fresh to go after the tournament and the next day. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get 15% off all Go Sleeve products. Let's do another quick summary before we get into the five common mistakes for a three-step approach jump. Start with a 20, 30 degree lean, opposite leg behind, foot sequence, left, right, left, for right-handed hitters, left-handed hitters, right, left, right. The distance should be medium, long, short. Foot angles should be straight, 30 degrees to 45, and then 45 to 90. Arms should be forward, back, up, or Scissor back up. Rhythm should be slow to fast. Arms should be loose to whip back into my backswing. And the most importantly, land into a half or full squat to dissipate that energy, minimize injury. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the three-step approach jump technique and I'll answer them in my next video where I'll be talking about the five common mistakes that athletes make when they are doing the three-step approach jump.